So we're here today with Laura Edwards at the Busy Conference 2023 in Stuttgart, and I would like to ask you, Laura, I mean, I know you a little bit, yeah. but um, tell, tell us a little bit about, is this your first BESIG um, or have you been here before? What mm -hmm. is it about BESIG conferences for you? So this isn't my first, but it's my first in a long while. Um, I, I think my second or my third. So it's been my first face-to-face -face event, uh, BESIG event in many years, and it has been really enjoyable so far, I have mm -hmm. to say. One, it was lovely meeting people from that you've met over the years, but also I find the mix of talks has been uh, has been great. I found something for all my interests, and um, yeah, that and really practical things too that I can actually use in the classroom next week, okay. which is good. And so you're also um, from another mm -hmm. Elta organization here in Germany. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I can. I'm very happy to. Um, I am a member of Elta Rhein. I'm personally based in Dusseldorf, but Elta Rhein represents the whole wider Rhineland region. And um, for that reason, I believe it is really important that all the teachers, particularly freelance teachers based in Germany, should join their local Elta for the professional development they get for the support, for the camaraderie, uh, as a cure against the isolation. We also all the ideas, ideas. yes, yeah. great ideas, yeah. exchange, etc. Yeah. So, um, if you're not a member, join. You heard it here first. <laughs> Very good. I'm here with Konstantin today, and Konstantin, is this your first time at Basig, or are you, is it, are you, have you been here before? Yes, Michelle, this is not only my first time at Basig, it's also my very first ELT conference. Wow. And uh, I'm very thrilled uh, that I was given the opportunity to come here. I've seen some amazing talks, and I gave a talk myself, uh, which I was very nervous about, of course, but eventually it turned out well. Well, I heard it was a great success. Thank you. And um, what can you tell me about um, English teaching organizations? Are you part of one where you're from? Uh, you're from Georgia, correct? Uh, so yeah, I was born in Georgia. I grew up in Greece. I went to an English school. And now I live in Paris. And I teach at a, a it's called Paul Universitaire Léonard de Vinci. It's, Je ne parle pas français. It's uh, basically a poll, a university <laughs> poll. Uh, and there are three schools, a business school and an engineering school and a digital media school. What I do is I create business English courses for myself and other teachers. And we teach from, you know, A1, to, me from B2 to C2 mm -hmm. and um, from undergraduate to postgraduate. Okay. So do you, are you active in an association in, in France? Or? Uh, no, but I will soon join TESOL France. Uh, I have uh, joined another movement, so to speak, an association called Humanizing English uh, Language Teaching. Mm -hmm. language teaching. Um, I'm not, I'm very new to the game. Okay. So it's, I'm discovering here now uh, at BESIC, uh, the different associations, different press, uh, publishing houses. Uh, so yes, I'm, I, I would love to get be more involved. Mm -hmm. What impresses you most about the English um, teaching organizations that you might have come across here in Stuttgart? What impresses me most is that behind the name, behind the face and the book covers and the uh, tests and the TOEIC and the TOEFL, there's always a human face, um, a human presence, a very um, likable and intelligent people that work in these uh, associations and publishing houses. Um, and for me, it's always delightful. Some of them have given talks today. For example, uh, for example, there was a talk earlier from uh, uh, one of the publishing houses, which is based in Athens, Greece. Right. Uh, and she gave a wonderful talk about using motivation uh, in the classroom. And uh, I, I learn a lot from these people. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, I keep learning and, I'm, and I want to keep learning as much as possible. Super. So would you, would you suggest that someone uh, join a teaching association? Wholeheartedly, yes. I would, 
Of course, but you would have to choose one that is tailored to your needs. That's right. Um, That's right. At the moment, myself, what I need is ideas. I need uh, uh, learning, act uh, teaching activities. I need more business English activities. I uh, need to, um, you know, open my horizons and think outside of the box. And uh, yeah, and interact with people who have ideas, who have experience, who are new and have new ideas. Uh, I think uh, speaking with other teachers, you know, sometimes when you're teaching and coordinating, it's a very lonely place because you That's don't right. have right, you don't have the time. Yeah, you're inside your own head. Exactly. Yeah, and you're within your bubble of your courses, your classes, and your books, and your books. Yeah, <laughs> and your internet. And you know, for example, um, our school has gone paperless. We don't use course books anymore. And our needs are very specific and therefore... Uh, Tailoring. You know, exactly, yeah. And it's very important to, right. to meet and learn from other people in these associations. Yeah. So yeah, I would wholeheartedly recommend someone, you know, a teacher especially, to join. Well, thank you for taking your time to talk to us today. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks for watching everyone. Get in contact with an English Language Teachers Association in your area right away. And we look forward to seeing you the next time. Right, Grace? That's my girl. <laughs>